y'all doing? Good, how are you? We are going to give them an hour to come back. We waited, so I'm going to just take this letter off. Yep. You'll well, need it for the next one. Need the letter now. Yeah. <laughs> need it for the next one. Right. Thank, you. Thank you guys. somebody that the church took out. guys just want to show it is painted right there in the spot and it is on the building right here parking only for the bank and I don't know how I'm gonna get out of here okay, I can't see front, good up front. okay you're good up front. I don't know what your side I'm good I can see over here Okay. Okay, guys, these are the ones that we really, we hate to do, um, but the bank is calling us, has to be removed. The bank has very limited spots. They've got under 10 parking spots for that whole bank in it, and there's signs everywhere that says you, you can't, unless you're doing a transaction, then you can't leave your car there. You can see what Friday has to offer here. We've got people blocking intersections, and uh, the traffic is just gridlocked but the problem with that one is it's local there's local tags so obviously it's probably somebody that's parked there and, and went to work and thought that they would be okay either you know they they may very well bank at that bank and uh just thought that hey since i bank here i'm just gonna park my car here and go to work probably the situation but we'll get the story obviously when they come to pick it up uh we may we may may not i guess they, they don't have to tell me the story but i usually try to to dig it out of them because hey you guys want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> never hurts to ask. And it never hurts to ask. But anyway, um, I talk a little bit about the employee towaways here. And, and I think we're going to end up with more of these in the days to come. If you guys have watched our videos, you know that Country Inn and Suites and that parking area over there for the church has been a, a really crazy situation for us. The church has always rented those parking spots out to employees that live in and around and work in and around here in the Gatlinburg area. So they, they would charge employees monthly to park in those spots. You know, that's how we got the towaways because employees didn't have a place to park because tourists were parking in their spots that they paid for monthly. Now we've got an issue with the church that has decided to not rent their parking spots out to, well, I shouldn't say that. They will still rent out the parking spots to the people that work in and around, but they have went to not selling them the monthly rental space to a daily rental space. You know, it's 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 quite a bit more. They're asking for a donation of ten dollars a day to park your vehicle in those spots where the employers were kind of taking up some of the slack. Some of the businesses were paying for up to you know three or four spots for their employees, and they would pay monthly to the church so that their employees would have a place to park but now the church has decided to to go with the daily instead of that so i think i think it's going to cause a big problem in that uh, those employees are not going to want to pay that that daily fee to park in uh and try to find a place to park or it's going to be i think it's going to be rough for the church too because if you guys watch our channel you know folks don't always do the right thing and all of their all they're asking for is a donation so it says on the side donate ten dollars and take a parking spot so i think there's going to be a lot of people that put a plug nickel in there and and park or just not pay at all and and still park i didn't see the sign i didn't see the sign because yeah it's just one donation box and uh that's pretty much it over there now they're 
you guys know what the numbered spots were all about. Not to mention that I think the um, I think Country Inn and Suites guests that we usually had a, an issue with parking there. I think uh, I think they're just going to park there now, and obviously they're not going to donate to the church because they think that those parking spots are for the hotel. So they're just going to overrun that end of the church donation parking lot. But that's just my that's my two cents on the situation. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments below. Let me know how you think that's going to turn out. You guys have watched our videos. You know how many issues we had with people parking in those employee parking spots. And now we've went to, to this. But yeah, we'd love to hear from you guys. I just wanted to kind of explain that in uh, leading up to what this pickup is probably going to end up being. Like I said, because it's a local tag and I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're... And they may not. They might be on their day off and uh, just cruising the, the village down there. I, I don't know really until we get the situation. But anyway... That's my two cents on that. Let us know what you think and uh, stay tuned for the pickup. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. We are here in between uh, waiting for some pickups. So I thought I would try to do another Bronco uh, video out there for you guys. Another annoying thing that we've found annoying on the Bronco. The one thing is the stop start eliminator. This is an eliminator kit that, that will disable that, that feature. So every time you get in the Bronco, uh, if you come to a stop, it, it'll automatically turn itself off to, to save fuel and, and uh, all of that crazy stuff there. But I don't like it personally. I think it wears out starters and uh, we, we tow a lot of vehicles. And in my opinion, this is one of them. It's starting twice as many times in, in the best of situations. So uh, we've reached out and purchased this stop start eliminator, which this thing goes in line, plugs in behind the button there. So every time you get in, you don't have to turn that feature off. It remembers the last time that you turned it off. So if you turn it off, you can do a thousand or a million starts. It will remember that it was in the off position. Um, or if you wanted to leave it on, as long as it's on, it will remember that last thing. So um, we've got a little bit of uh, digging to do to get this thing taken apart here. Um, I grabbed this one on Amazon, guys. This one here, it looks like it was uh, 44 bucks for the Bronco. They do sell them for the Jeep and probably multi uh, multiple other vehicles that had the start-stop feature. But $44.99, you can get, uh, you know, wherever. Uh, most of the internet has these uh, kits everything that you might need to go along with the kit to make that happen. Uh, but for the Bronco, I thought I'd cover it for you guys. Looks like we're gonna need probably a T30 star bit, and I think it's a seven millimeter. This handle's gotta come off. Um, I do have a little plastic tool to get in here and pop off this lower panel. This lower trim piece has gotta come off. Then you open up the glove box, and there's a seven millimeter up here, and then you take down this lower kick panel on the driver's side and then there's another seven millimeter bolt on the other side and then this ultimately this piece will will come down and behind there here is the start stop feature button there but we're going to get back behind that button there and and uh, put in the put in the kit in line on that so stick around stay tuned i'll show you what that looks like okay guys literally that took me probably under just a minute or two to do all of that stuff. Very easy. Everything come apart pretty easy. And as you can see, uh, most of this stuff pops down. Um, got the, the screws out of that location. But back in behind here, and some of these clips will fall off, guys, these little, when you're, when you're popping it down. But they go back very easy. They just clip into these, these little holders here. Like this one popped off from here. So you just push them back on. And it's back in place and it'll go right back on but you got to give it a little bit of oomph um, like i said I, I like these little plastic tools we use these for lockouts and things like that um they're they're very easy on the track on the plastic so you can get that started but we'll get this thing plugged in and i'll show you what that looks like in the eliminator position okay guys got all of that put back together <laughs> And I thought, this is wrong. They've sent me the wrong kit. I've watched uh, watched a few installation uh, videos myself and uh, thought that this is what I needed to do. Well, instead of me erasing this footage and uh, starting all over and pretending like everything was hunky-dory and that this switch went in here, I feel like I need to continue with this video because this kit is way better, guys. So you've seen that I had all of this pop down. I had the, the hardware out and pop this down. And even though, like I said, it was super easy, Took me under a minute to get all of that stuff popped down. It's still kind of invasive to get to that switch. Well, this this kit, guys, I'm not sure what that other kit was and some of the stuff that I'd watched on that, but if I was going to buy, I don't know how I lucked out, but I should have bought. I'm glad that I bought this. And here's, here's, we're having a guy moment. 
you never read instructions. Just assume that the, what I was doing was good. But anyway, it does come with instructions. And look how much easier this was than what I initially started to show you guys because of the videos that I watched. So it, you don't have to take anything apart. There's no tools needed. And all you have to do is, is kind of scoot that seat back out of the way. So there's a little box right here, a little black box. You just unplug the black side and this stuff goes in line to that black box. So no tools required. It comes with a little piece of Velcro uh, to affix the box back up there. So I'll get that up there and out of the way. And that's it guys. There was no unbolting. There's no clips to pull. There's no tools to, to be had. So like I said, guys, I, you know, it, these videos, if it'll help somebody, by all means, I just didn't realize that there was a kit out there that was a lot less invasive than the few kits that I had looked at. But apparently that's one. So just know that you can leave all of your interior put together. You can pop that in there. Works great. But yes, guys, got everything buttoned back up. Got my Velcro on the bottom. And let's just give it a C. <laughs> There it is. You've seen it. So that automatically went off when I turned it on. It remembered what setting that I want that in. And uh, we don't have to worry about the vehicle turning off when we come up to a stop sign, stop light, any of those situations. Like I said, being in the tow truck world, it just, I, I've seen it happen. You know, starters wear out twice as fast because, you know, in, in just one trip to town, this, this thing would start on an average of, you know, say you were just going to the grocery store, you hit a couple of stoplights and and uh, and then got there. You, you could have potentially started the vehicle five times from the grocery store and back, and, and it could have started two times, once when you left the grocery store. And, uh, but it's, it's just crazy. I, I don't, I just don't like that feature, and I'm glad that they offer a kit that'll do this, because we were, we thought, well, it, it offers the mode to turn it off, and uh, no big deal. We won't we won't fool with anything because we can we can turn it off. But the problem is it doesn't remember that you turned it off. So you'll get in and you'll go, and then before you remember that you didn't turn it off, the vehicle died already at a stoplight. So you know that's it's just a nice it's a nice kit, and I'm glad that this kit uh, is is way easier. So grab yourself one of those guys on Amazon or wherever else you can find those plug and play units. But that was a definite easy installation, and we are super happy not to have to fool with that button. We're moving right along, guys. We're, we've are we got a few more things that we want to put on the Bronco uh, to make it uh, a little less frustrating. Uh, so we've got a few more things coming. So stick around, stay tuned. More coming your way. Okay, guys. Uh, sorry for the really short notice. We had a really nasty, gnarly crash here on 321. Got THP up. We got a uh, guy that's borrowed our broom and blower. He's helping out from the fire department there. So big shout out to the fire department. They're getting some glass off the road. Uh, everybody was okay. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of light on the subject right now, but this car is, it just avoided a, uh, a head-on collision, uh, which was, thank goodness, because it went right down the side of it instead of, uh, instead of the head-on collision. But we're here, we got uh, 321 shut down. So I apologize if you're gonna be waiting in traffic for a little bit longer probably, but we're gonna see if we can get the, uh, the wreck site cleaned up here and uh, get this thing back to the lot. Okay guys, uh, we, we're back here at the lot with this. I just wanted to show, now that we have a little bit of light, just how bad this one was. This is crazy. Like that's the lock out of the door. I, so this, I peeled the whole door frame off of this side back here guys. This is, this is what the outside door looked like. That's crazy. Super lucky family though, guys. They were traveling down 321. The, the dad said that he seen some uh, headlights coming right at him. He said, so I just kind of turned my head and braced for what he just knew was gonna be a head-on collision. And uh, he said, it, it, whatever happened, it was, it ended up just swerving just enough to come down the side. And he had some pretty good cuts on his arm, but everybody was okay. Uh, both vehicles were okay. All of the kids were okay. These things right here, guys, are amazing. Airbags are a, are a very good thing. That's a pretty wild, pretty wild crash there. I'm gonna get the dollies off of it because it's gonna be easier for me to just back it in the lot. It had a flat tire is the only reason I put dollies on it. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay guys, I'm going to the lot. Two o'clock in the morning. Sorry about the phone call, missed that on the uh, camera. I didn't have the microphone plugged in. The only bad thing about the microphones, they work great when you remember to plug them in. In your defense, you were asleep. But it is two o'clock in the morning, so. Anyway, missed that phone call, but we are over here. And um, just as we thought, this gal parked there because she was late for work. And she says she banks with the bank. And because she banks with the bank, she thought it'd be okay. Hey, man. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, the bank called. It was it was actually early. It was about 1, 1.30 when they called. They said they put a note on your car and they waited about an hour before they called us. And, I and heard I was trying to get home and it wouldn't let me out of Yeah, they, uh, they're pretty strict on their stuff on a Friday over there. They're like, nope, <laughs> can't do that. I don't know what that bank's got six parking spots maybe over there. There's, that's, I don't know how they function with that parking lot that they've got. I know, yeah. Yeah, we had a guy tell me that too. I had a guy tell me, I just deposited my check there and he left his car there and he went down to, to work at, or get something to eat. <laughs> they called on him again there, but I don't know what they give. I think they give 20 minutes or something supposed to be 20 minute parking if you're if you're inside the store oh no i hate that for you i do but i they uh they'll call i promise dear they'll call if you're if you're on their parking lot and you're not in their store they'll call for removal and unfortunately that's uh it's just what happens on the, you, you, you got to hit one of those paid parking lots. I have my parking pass for, but I was late. You couldn't get down there. Yeah, I have my pass from work. So I, like I, my name is not, I'm walking to work, but today I had to turn around to get to the house. Yeah. To get something set up for my grandmother. So then I was like, okay, I was like, I'm going to be late. I'm just going to park in there and then try to get out of at Ford with somebody call out. So then I had to stay. I had to stay. No, I understand. I, like, I understand. You I got... was like, did somebody rob my car? I was like, uh, no. <laughs> and, and I promise it was the worst, but you were in that very end parking spot and it was completely full on the parking. I was over there for probably 40 minutes trying to get your car out of that parking lot without taking out 13 other cars that were around you there. It was the, it was the worst possible. It was, it was super busy over there too. And I, I, uh, I would have rather left it over there. I promise. <laughs> yes. they, they've gotten better over there across from that. They, they put a, a big chain up. Have you seen the Candy Kitchen parking lot? They chained that now. It got so bad and they were calling us so much that they finally let them put poles and gate off of there. But now the first... But the cars are parked like these. I know, I know. They're, they try to put cones down through there too. The bank will put cones so nobody can park. And uh, it, it's just run and i understand you guys have a you got to have a place to park for work but i have my my pass like I, have <laughs> I tell you if here's what i tell people I have my if you pass would in the car because i was like i really had to if you would put a note this would have probably never happened and i tell people that if you put a note where somebody can get a hold of you to tell you to come move your car it would they would they wouldn't call us but that's the problem is nobody they don't know who to call where you are but they need their parking spot and they uh yeah they're it's just a pri it's a private parking lot and unfortunately they don't if it was in the street i promise he would let you know i own tickets to the city oh uh, i mean that's it's it's tough i do i get it because we deal with this all the time and it's a uh, it's a lot less now since some of the parking lots have gotten gates and chains and things like that. But they will. I promise they'll call. I have, I have my parking pass. Yeah. yeah. You got you got to be in that parking lot. Yeah. You got to be in that parking lot, and then uh, then you'd be safe and you won't have to be talking to any of us. You can be resting for work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, that's kind of bad. Well, dear, as long as you're the registered owner, you're, this is your car and you're registered to it. Sure, this officer. Yep. Gotcha. Well, that's what it is, ma'am. We've, we've got a couple of different trips over here, and then I'm telling you, I promise it was super difficult to get out of the parking lot. If I've got keys and things like that, we can tow things very easily, but when it's locked and the parking lot's packed, it's it's quite the ordeal to get them out of there. So we just come from 321, that one there. We just got that one cleaned up. That, that dude was super lucky. Yeah, that, that it was almost a head on down there on Hooper Highway. Oh, you went. We went, yeah. I'll, I'll get you a receipt, ma'am, and, and if you want to, if you can make it to the gate, we'll meet you up there. All righty. But yeah, I try, guys. She's she's really lucky. Um, Gatlinburg PD, those officers are amazing. They've given her a ride over here to get her car at 2 o'clock in the morning, and, and uh, she's just not supposed to be there. You know, just because you bank with them doesn't give you the right to take up their, their parking spots. But Hey, man, thank you, guys. No, no, I appreciate you guys, man. Be safe. This is a itemized receipt. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Be careful, okay? Hey, dear, can you move the truck? My husband is only here for three more weeks, and she's 84 years old, and she does not speak any English. 84. 84. Bless her heart. Okay. Bless her heart. It's like having a two-year-old in the house by herself the whole day. And then so. you're trying to work 10, 12 hours a day on top. Six, 17 hours. Because I, I went in at like 8.30 and I just I know, right now. I know, that's what I'm trying. Because when they called us to, to remove it, it was like almost, tw it was a little after 12. And then you're just now coming to pick it up. Yeah. I thought that you weren't even going to come. It was late. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Can you do a recap on that one? I can certainly try. I don't know if, I don't know if you picked that. But yeah, guys, she's um she's in a hurry. You know, she, she was trying to get things uh done with it she said her grandmother was in town um, she's 84 years old she doesn't speak any English I'm not sure what country they're from they're trying to make it and uh, she she was trying to take care of her grandma her grandma needed something so she had to turn back around when she was at work to go back to help her grandma uh, with something which made her late for work so when she came back instead of her her employer gives her a pass and a place to park but she, the traffic was so bad that she couldn't make it back to that parking lot that they provide for her. So she thought that she would just park there and run the rest of the way down so she wasn't late. Well, too late. I guess she was already late for work, but so it wasn't too awful bad. You know, she thought since she banked there that it would be okay. And um, she said she was, she's mad. She's going to pull all of her money out of the bank. And, you know, it's not... It's not about that. If you guys watch my video, you know we had another fellow that went to, went and deposited his paycheck for the week and left his car there at the bank and walked down and got lunch and and uh, fooled around there in town and and thought that that would be okay. You know, it's if you're not in the bank doing business, then they do not want your car taking up a, a, a spot because they've only got just a handful of parking spots there. And that's fair. I think that's fair. And they they were more than fair. They gave her an hour. So the manager called the manager called us and said, "I need you to remove this car. It's we've given it an hour. We put a note on it and um and uh, we need it gone now." So we removed the car and you know, they don't It's like I told her. I said, "You know, this this could all be resolved in if you had an extreme emergency, you should have left a note." That way, you know, they know who to call to come and move their car. They're not going to call us at that point. If there's a note and they have the opportunity to call and say, hey, can you please move your car? You're, you're blocking our spot. They're going to call you before they call us. Doing the, doing the thing that you need to do, and sometimes it gets overlooked, I guess. But uh, it's exactly what I thought. You know, she's, she's working, and whether, you, whether your employer inside of Gatlinburg provides you a parking spot or not, it's sometimes still super difficult to get to that parking spot because if you've watched even this video right here that we're in i think i pointed out gridlock traffic you know there's pedestrians walking when they're not supposed to and which throws off the stoplights and people blocking the intersection with their car because they're running stoplights and it's just it's crazy if, if i had to be at work at a certain time my lordy, you might want to reconsider the time frame there because it's going to take you 
an extra hour or so just to just to make that happen. And I and I do. I feel sorry for the employees. And, and if you're working in Gatlinburg, whew, you've got your work cut out for you for sure. And and that does that goes with the officers too. Amazing job. We appreciate Gatlinburg and going above and beyond. Like I said, that officer didn't have to bring her, you know, to her car and and try to help her out of her her situation. She she brought that on herself, and he's he's going out of his way to try to to find out what's going on and and to get her taken care of so she can get home. So that's really cool. Uh, and we'll work that that wreck tonight too. So I want to give want to give some more props to the rescue squad and the fire department. You know, it's uh, sometimes it's a handful for me and Kristen to do these accident scenes and and get the car loaded plus all the debris and glass and all that stuff cleaned up and you know those guys don't have to help us in any way they dive right in and, and uh, one guy had a had my blower and another guy had my broom and they were helping us clean and they stacked all the parts up for us and just super cool that everybody can can work together and we appreciate all those guys there but it's super late like i said we're after the two o'clock hour now and you know, i told her that we'd get her car back to her in the morning or tomorrow but that wasn't going to work for her because that's her only car and she's got to be back at work at eight o'clock in the morning oh my gosh. she said um somebody called in she's worked a 16 hour shift today and she's got to be back at work at eight o'clock in the morning and so that was kind of the urgency on that one like i said i always try to get people their car back just because i know you know the vacationers that's your you don't have a lot of options there but uh, she's definitely not a vacationer but she's going above and beyond as far as helping her employer out hopefully her employer will help her out and she'll have a better time with that but anyway i am going to try to catch some more shut eye before the next round it's late so stick around stay tuned